In the name of God, the most merciful, most gracious, peace and God's blessings be upon you. I would like to welcome you in Doha and I wish you a pleasant stay. The Elite Developed Countries uh, Fifth Conference is being held in light of uh, serious challenges that the world uh, is witnessing and that are a result uh, of re new international conflicts as well as the international food crisis and climate change, not to mention uh, the continued aftershocks of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are required to face these challenges and to keep them in consideration as we plan for the joint and common future of our countries and nations for the next decade in the life of the LDCs group. Billions in these countries continue to suffer from poverty and the lack of food, health care and education. There is no doubt that this is primarily a structural issue related to the absence of a balance in the relationship between advanced industrial centers and the peripheries in our world. But it is also a matter of uh, developmental and economic policies that are soundly implemented in LDCs. Some of these LDCs have managed to overcome the marginalization because of their development policies. However, in all cases, this is our common cause. This is a global cause, and this must be realized by developed countries and their societies. Our meeting is being held as our brothers and sisters in Turkey and Syria continue to suffer from the effects of the huge earthquake that hit them when that damaged millions and affected their lives. And here on your behalf, I reaffirm our solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Turkey and Syria, and I call on you all to support Turkey's efforts to overcome the effects of this catastrophe. I would also like to confirm the need to lend assistance with no hesitation to our brotherly Syrian people, and uh, I am uh, puzzled by the delay in aid given to this people, and I confirm that it is wrong to abuse a humanitarian tragedy for political purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no way we can build a new world in a manner that is safer and more just and free for today and tomorrow, except through global human solidarity. Therefore, holding this conference is a renewed statement of our solidarity and the unity of our common will to confront joint challenges and search for effective and sustainable solutions. This conference is an important opportunity to evaluate what has been achieved within the framework of the Istanbul Program of Action, which was adopted over a decade ago. Here, the Doha Program of Action which crowned the intergovernmental negotiations that took place uh, in New York when it was adopted by consensus, is the basis of a roadmap to support and confront the problems facing LDCs in the upcoming decade. The conference will not succeed simply by adopting this uh, program, but by implementing it and implementing it well. We value what was achieved within uh, the uh, five uh, Outputs uh, that were adopted for LDCs, uh, which are in the form of establishing a uh, food storage network, a food storage facility, as well as an online university and different platforms for these countries and adopting comprehensive measures for, by stakeholders to alleviate uh, the disputes and, uh, sorry, alleviate crises and build resilience and to implement uh, investment uh, plans in these states and to develop a facility for the graduation of LDCs in a sustainable manner. Distinguished guests, there is a common global responsibility in confronting the challenges of food security and climate change and energy crisis and the debt crisis and finding solutions is a collective and important responsibility which, among all countries. However, Regardless of our analysis in respect of the backgrounds of the gap between developed and the least developed countries, 
there is a moral obligation incumbent upon the rich and developed countries to contribute more to assist the least developed countries to overcome the global challenges that we are now dealing with. This is a responsibility and not a favor. On the other hand, the least developed countries must create the conducive conditions to transform joint crises into national action at the level of strategies, plans, and national legislations. These countries are not responsible for the past, yet it is their duty to adopt and follow rational policies for the present. We say this while at the same time we take into consideration existing structural obstacles and the unequal relationship between the global north and the global south. Ladies and gentlemen, I avail myself of this opportunity to commend the positive initiatives to combat poverty and address the urgent needs for food security in many poor countries. However, the food security crisis cannot be solved only by providing emergency humanitarian aid or temporary remedies. Rather, it is also necessary to assist these countries achieve their food security. We have put forward initiatives within the context of addressing the root causes of the problems, such as the initiative of the Global Dryland Alliance to enable dryland countries to achieve food security. Others have put forward their own initiatives as well. It might be appropriate to revive the theme of the Secretary General of the United Nations of no poverty in the world. The realization of this requires an international synergy to implement a humanitarian, a human development plan at the global level. Here we must pay due attention to the relationship between peace and development. Food security and development cannot be achieved against the backdrop, the backdrop of raging civil wars in a number of the poorest countries in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, our discussion of urgent international crises and their dire repercussions on least developed countries, we see the debt crisis, which has crippled the growth and development in these countries, as is strongly evident. Here we value the efforts made by the G20, especially the extraordinary summit of leaders hosted by the Brotherly Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on the COVID-19 pandemic and the steps taken under the presidency of Italy regarding the debt service suspension period for the poorest countries. However, the debt issue needs to be addressed more comprehensively in a way that takes into consideration justice and pragmatism to break the vicious cycle through which countries opt to borrow for developmental purposes, such as building infrastructure and so on. Debt repayment thus exacerbates poverty and prevents the implementation of development projects. As for the climate crisis, the Sharm al-Sheikh summit held in sisterly Egypt made an achievement in establishing the loss and damage fund allocated to assist and support developing countries. Based on our commitment to combating climate change and the internationally approved policies in this regard, we aspire that the advanced industrial countries would fulfill their legal and moral responsibilities in taking more effective and efficient decisions and measures on emissions. Ladies and gentlemen, the state of Qatar takes pride in continuing its active role in multilateral international action across the different fields of development and humanitarian issues, human rights, and mediation to promote international peace and security. In this context, and based on our National Vision 2030, which upholds the values and principles of cooperation, partnership, and solidarity in helping countries, peoples, and communities suffering from humanitarian crises, conflicts, poverty, and debt, the state of Qatar has made a lot of humanitarian and development contributions in accordance with the formulas of bilateral and multilateral cooperation, 
especially within the framework of strategic partnerships with the United Nations and other leading international organizations and institutions. Based on the state of Qatar's firm commitment to supporting the contribution of least developed countries, I announced a financial contribution of a total amount of 60 million U.S. dollars, of which 10 million U.S. dollars will be allocated for supporting the implementation of the Doha Program of Action for LDCs. $50 million will be allocated for supporting the intended outcomes of the Doha Program of Action and building resilience in the least developed countries. I urge development partners to follow the example of Qatar and take the initiative to support the implementation of the Doha Program of Action as part of our humanitarian and developmental duty towards the peoples of least developed countries. We are confident that this conference and by means of building on the successes achieved in the course of realizing growth, prosperity, and creating sustainable livelihoods, it will contribute to supporting the least developed countries' march towards achieving development in the next 10 years, and in line with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In conclusion, I welcome you again in Doha, the city that offers a spacious ambience for mediations and for debate and multilateral conferences and cultural activities and intellectual production. Doha, the city that has recently witnessed the most successful World Cup tournament ever. I wish this conference to realize its desired goals and to achieve the aspirations of the peoples of these countries whose attention is focused on what would come out from this important conference. May God's peace and blessings be upon you.